Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. We're back at Dell Technologies World. The, the inaugural Dell Technologies World. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm really excited to have Sanjay Poonin on, CEO of VMware, a long time CUBE alum. Great to see you, my friend. Always Thanks so much for making time. I know you're, you're you. in and out, but uh, things are good. We had Pat on on Monday. Great. You guys made the call early on. You said to the street, you know, I think the industry analysts, the forecasts are maybe a little conservative. We're seeing great demand. We love our business right now and it's coming true. D data center's booming. VMware's kicking butt, it's going great. You know, it's been uh, obviously a very good couple of years mm -hmm. since the Dell EMC merger, and it's really helped us. And uh, uh, you know, when we think about our partnerships, we put this in a very special place. Uh, in the last two years, partnerships like Dell and AWS have been really instrumental, built on top of many of the partnerships we've had for many years. And our core principles at VMware have not changed. We're really focused on software defining the data center. Why? Because it makes you more agile, removes cost, reduces complexity, makes the planet more green. We think we've got a long way to go in just building that private cloud, making the data center feel like a cloud. That's priority number one. Priority number two, extending to the hybrid cloud. Last time we talked was at AWS reInvent. That's very important. We're doing, we're going to work there, AWS and many other clouds. End user computing, making sure every one of these type of devices uh, are secure and managed, whether it's Apple device, Google, or Microsoft. Those three priorities have still stayed the same and now Dell's coming to give us a lot more of that sort of draft to help us do that inside uh, the Dell EMC customer base too. Yeah, and you guys are doing it again. I mean, the whole, the NSX obviously is, is- Big launch this is, week. Is booming. You know, it's funny, the whole software, defi software defined networking thing, everybody flocked to it, <laughs> VCs flocked to it, and then you guys changed the game with that Nicera acquisition. I mean, could you imagine, I mean, I guess you did imagine what, what it was going to become. I mean, it's really, taken off in a big way. Bold move, I got to give credit to the to VMware. I wasn't at the company at the time, um, but I got to tell you, when I saw that, I was stunned. Paying 1.2 billion for a company that didn't have much You're revenue. Like, what? Right? But here yeah. we are, we talked about it in our earnings call being a 1.4 billion run rate business, 4,500 customers. We were zero customers five years ago when we did the acquisition. And what we've really defined is that the future of networking is going to be software defined, clearly, and it's much the same way a Tesla is transforming the automotive industry, right? What's the value of a Tesla? It's not just the hardware, but the software that's changing the way in which you drive, park, all of the mapping, all of that stuff. We believe the same way the networking uh, industry is going to go through a mighty revolution. We think the data center gets more efficient and driven through software. The path into the public cloud and the path in the branch. And that's what we, as we launched our virtual cloud networking, it's extremely differentiated. Uh, in the industry, we're the only ones really pioneering that, and we think it's extremely visionary. And we're, we're excited to take our customers on this journey. It was a big launch for us this week, and we think NSX is just getting started. 4,500 uh, customers is about 1% of our roughly 500,000 customers of vSphere. Every one of them should be looking at NSX. Mm. Big opportunity ahead of us. Huge, and, and, and the cloud play, we talked about this at, at VMworld uh, last summer, the clarity now that your customers have, they can now make bets for a couple of cycles anyway, really having confidence in your, your cloud strategy. You've seen that, I'm sure, in your customer base, right? We have, and you know, it started off by telling the world that the 4,000 service providers that have built their stack on VMware, VMware Cloud Providers, VCPP, are all going to be very special to us as they build out their clouds, often in many specialized country that have country-specific cloud uh, requirements. But then we were going to take the public clouds and systematically start working with them. IBM Cloud was the first when they acquired SoftLayer. We had a strong relationship with them, announced them two, three years ago. And then I think the world was shocked. It was almost, as I've described on uh, the media, a Berlin Wall moment when AWS and VMware came together. Because it sort of felt like the United States and Soviet Union in 1987, <laughs> okay? And you know, here we have these two companies really working. That's worked out very well for us. And then we've done systematic other things with Azure, Google, and so on and so forth, and we'll see how the public cloud plays out. But we think that that hybrid cloud bridge, we're going to be probably the only company who can really play a very pivotal role in the world moving from private cloud to public cloud, cloud and the, there's going to be balance on both sides of that divide. So you really essentially are trying to become the infrastructure for the digital world now, aren't you? 
Uh, talk about that a little bit. You're seeing new workloads. Obviously AI is all the buzz. You guys are doing some work in blockchain. It's going to take a while for that to, to pick up. But, but really it's, it, it's the, and, and containers is the other thing. Everybody thought, oh, containers, that's, that's the end of, of VMs. And Pat at the time said, no, 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 you guys don't understand. <laughs> Let me explain it. Sort of laid it out. You seem to be embracing that, again, embracing change. I got to tell you, we'll that one that. for me, because I tell you, when I first joined the company you know, four and a half years ago, I was at SAP, I asked Pat two questions. I, think the, I said, the public cloud's going to, I mean, probably take out VMware. Aren't you concerned about Amazon? Here we are taking that headwind and making a tailwind. The second is like, everyone's talking about Docker. I mean, aren't containers going to just destroy VMs? And that one wasn't as clear uh, yeah. to us at the time, but we were patient. And what happened, we started to notice in the last few years, we began to notice on GitHub, a tremendous amount of activity around Kubernetes. And here comes Google, almost taking the top off a lot of you know, parts of Docker too. Docker Swarm, yeah. Enterprise. Docker still remains a very good container format, but the orchestration layer has become a Google-based project called Kubernetes. And I think our waiting allowed us and Pivotal to embrace Google in the partnership we announced last year, and we plan to become the de facto enterprise container platform. If VMs became the VM and VMware, and we have 500,000 customers, tens of millions of VMs, we think you can multiply those VMs by some number to get the number of containers. VMware has its rightful place, a birthright, to become the de facto enterprise container platform. We're just getting started, both between us and Pivotal, the Kubernetes investment, big deal, and we're going to do it in partnership with companies like Google. I want to ask you about Pivotal. When, when Joe Tucci was at a Swang Song, Swang Song EMC world, he, he came out, it was an analyst meeting, and, and we asked him, if you had a mulligan, you know, what would you do over again? He said, you know, uh, it was, we're going to answer it this way. He said, I, I wished I had done more to bring together the, the family, you know, the federation. We laid that vision out, and we, I probably, he said, personally, I probably could have done more. I feel like Michael has taken this on. I almost feel like Joe, you know, when he left, said, Michael, my one piece of advice you know, is, you know, do a better job than I did with that integration. And, and it seems like Michael's taken that on as an outsider. What, what can you tell us about the, the, the relationship between all the, the companies, particularly Pivotal? Yeah, you know, Joe's a very special man as our chairman. Uh, and Joe and Pat are the reasons I joined VMware. So I have tremendous respect for him. And he's stayed on as an advisor uh, to Michael Dell. And you know, I think Michael Dell just took a lot of those things and improved on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say that anything was dramatically bad, but you know, he tightened up much of the places where we could work together. One material change was having the Dell EMC reps carry quota, for example, VMware. They're incentivized. That's been a huge difference to allow us to have our sales forces completely aligned together. Big, big, huge difference. I mean, salespeople care about a product when they're compensated, carry quota on it, and drive it. Uh, the, the second aspect was in many of these places where uh, Dell and VMware or VMware and Pivotal needed where we'll just take obstacles out of the way. And uh, I don't think Pivotal would have been really successful if it had stayed within VMware four or five years ago. So Paul Moritz leaving, the genius of that whole move, which Joe orchestrated, and allowing them to flourish. Okay, here they are four or five years, they've gone public, they're having tremendous amount of traction. And then last year we began to see that Kubernetes is coming back, allowed us to get closer to them, okay? We didn't need to do that by necessarily saying Pivotal needs to be part of VMware, we just needed to build a joint engineering effort around Kubernetes and make that enormously successful. So you get the best of both worlds. We're an investor, obviously, in, in Pivotal. We're proud of their success in the public markets. We benefit some from the, that sort of IPO process. But at the same time, we want to make sure this Kubernetes effort and the broader app platform on Cloud Foundry is enormously successful, and every one of our customers who have VMs starts to look at containers. Well, I always said, <laughs> Pivotal was formed with a bunch of misfit toys. They just didn't quite fit yeah. into VMware. It didn't it's come a long way. To, and you took that, but, but, the, but it was smart because you took it and said, okay, here it is. Moritz, you know, start figuring that out. Who better to do that than Paul? And it's really come together and obviously a very successful. John, Rob, me, IPA. Scott, Yara, Bill Cook, many of that team there, they're passionate about developers. Okay? We understand the infrastructure world very well, but when you can get dev and ops together in a way where they collaborate. So we're excited about it. And we have a key part for us, we have a very simple mission, to make the container platform just very secure. What's the differentiation between us and other companies trying to build uh, container platforms with PKS, NSX? So our contribution into that is to take Kubernetes, Bosch for some of the management capabilities, and then add NSX to it, highly differentiated. And now all of a sudden customers say, this is the reason why, because I mean, every container brings a, a, a place where the port could be insecure. NSX makes that secure. 
And uh, we think that that's another key part to what's made NSX the launch this week extremely special, is its story as it relates to cloud and containers. Those two C's, I would say, cloud and containers, we've taken what were headwinds to us, VMware, over the last four or five years and made them tailwinds. Mm. And uh, for us, that's been a tremendous learning lesson, not just, I would say, in our own technology roadmap, but in leadership and management. And that's important for us as business leaders, too. And I got to give some, some love to my friends in the, in the vSAN world, Yan Bing and, and those guys. Um, obviously, vSAN doing very well. Um, give us the update there. I mean, you're doing, to, you're doing exactly what you said. We're going to do to, to networking and storage what we did to compute. I mean, again, you know, when we start things off, if you remember three, four years ago, we were confused between EMC and VMware. Evo Rail, some of those things. We just had to clean that up. And uh, as Dell EMC came together and VMware, we said, listen, we're going to do software-defined storage really well because it has a very close synergy point to the hypervisor. I mean, we know a lot about storage because it's very closely connected to compute. And if we could do that better than anybody else, in the meantime, all these startups, whether it's, you know, we're doing reasonably well, Simplicity, uh, Nutanix, Pivot3, so on and so forth, but there's no reason if we don't have our act together, we could build the best software-defined storage and then engineer a system together with Dell that has the hardware, and that's what VxRail has become. So a few false stubs of the toe when we started off, you know, three, four years ago, but we've come a long way. Uh, Pat talked about over 10,000 customers at the revenue run rate that we announced uh, last year on a 600 million run rate at the end of Q4. We believe we are, for just the software piece, but we are the, the de facto leader, and we have to continue to make customers happy um, and to drive you know, this as the future of, of hyper-converged infrastructure because Converge had its place, and now the coming together of compute, storage, overtime, networking, with a layer of management, that's the future of the data center. Yeah, yeah, we're watching There's some good, interesting you know, maneuvering going on in the marketplace. A lot of fun for a company like ours to, to watch. I want to talk about leadership. There's a great, you got to go to Sanjay's LinkedIn profile. There's an awesome video on there. It's like a, it's like a mini, mini TED talk that you, you, some of your folks mashed up and, and put out there. It's only about eight minutes. Um, but I want to touch on some of the things that I learned uh, from that video. Your background, I, I, I mean, I knew you came from India, you, you came over at 18 years old, right? I was very fortunate. I grew up in a poor uh, home in India and I came here only because I got a scholarship to go to Dartmouth College. And I think I might have been the one of the few brown-skinned guys in New Hampshire, Hanover, New Hampshire. You've been there, there's not many. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> not much going on there, you know, period. But uh, <laughs> I'm very fortunate. And this country is a very special country to immigrants if you work hard. Um, and if you're willing to apply yourself. And I'm a product of that hard work. And now as an Indian American, now living in California. So I feel very fortunate for all that both the country and people who invested in me over the last many decades have uh, helped me so become were, who I am. So you were in a scholarship to Dartmouth. Yes, that's right. As a student in India. Yeah. So obviously an accomplished student in India. And you said, you know, I, was, I got bullied a little bit, I had the glasses, right? My, somebody once told me, Dave, don't peak in high school. That's good advice, right? So it's, it was funny to hear you tell that story because I see you as such a charismatic, dynamic leader. I can't picture you as, you know, as a little kid getting bullied. We were, we were but, always geeks at one point in time. But one of the things my mother and dad always taught me, especially my mom, who had a tremendous influence in my life and is my hero, is listen, don't worry what people say about you, okay? Your home is always going to feel a safety and a fortress to us. And I, I appreciate the fact that irrespective of what happened on the playground if I was bullied, at home I knew it was secure. And I seek to have that same attitude towards my children and to everybody I'd consider my extended family, people at work and so on and so forth. Uh, but once you've done that, you don't build your identity just through what people say about you. You're going to build your identity through what's done over a long period of time, okay? With, of course, if everybody in the world hates you, that's a tough place, okay? That's happened to a few people in the world, but I wasn't in that state at all. Uh, and as I came to this country, it just got tougher because I was a minority, in a place, but many of those lessons I learned as a young boy helped me as an 18 year old as I uh, came here, and I'm very thankful and for that. And you came here with no money, right? A scholarship. A scholarship in your pocket. Yeah. Right, well, you know, and, and maybe an 50 bucks in the pocket. And 50 bucks in an opportunity, yeah. and made the most of it. And then, and then obviously, you did very well at Dartmouth. You, you graduated from Harvard, right? I did my MBA at Harvard. Your MBA yeah. at Harvard. Probably met some interesting people there. Andy right? Jackson, I know being Andy's one of them. a friend of yours. Sam Bird, who's the head <laughs> of the client business, was also a classmate of mine at HBS. The 97 class of HBS had some accomplished people. Chris Kaptensky uh, is running McDonald's, he's president of the US. So uh, very fortunate to have some good classmates there. What did you do? Did you go right to Harvard from? Uh, no, I spent four years working at, at Apple. Okay, okay, so you were at Apple? Uh, Apple, and then went back to do my business school. And then what did you do after that? I came back to Silicon Valley to be a, at a startup. I was one of the founding product managers at AlphaBlocks, then went to Informatica, and bulk of my life was time was at SAP. 
Right. And most of my life was in the analytics, big data business. Yeah. Okay, what we call big data today. That's at the where time. we first met. That's analytics and BI. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, when Joe and Pat called me for this, the end user computing role uh, at VMware. Uh, four and a half years ago, that's when I came to VMware. Yeah, and then that was a huge coup for, for VMware. We, we knew you from SAP, and, and, then, and, and that business was struggling. You always give credit to your team, of course. Awesome, which is what a good leader does. The other thing I wanted to touch on before we break is, you talked about leadership and, and how important it is to embrace change. You said you have three choices when change hits you. What, what, what are those three choices? You either embrace it, okay, you either stand on the sidelines or you leave, okay? And that's typically what happens to any kind of change. Whether it's change at work, change in families, change in other kinds of religious settings. I mean, it's the time whole principle. And you want to let the people who are not on board with it leave, if they want to leave. The people who are staying in the middle and not yet convinced, you hope they'll do, but they cannot throw grenades. Because then they're just going to be. And then you want to take that nucleus of people who are with you in the change as the change agents to help you get the people who sit in the sidelines in. And uh, to me, when I joined VMware, the end user computing team had the highest attrition, okay, and the lowest uh, satisfaction. Um, and I found the same thing. There were people who were leaving in droves, some people sitting on the sidelines, but a core group of people, I love that, were willing to really work with me. Because I didn't know a lot about, I mean, the smarter people were in the team and some people that we hired in. Uh, we had to take that group and become the change agents. And when that happens, it's a beautiful thing. Because from within starts to form this thing that's the phoenix rising out of the ashes. And the company, and then these people who are sideliners start to get involved. New people want to join. Now everybody wants to be part of the end user computing team at VMware because we're a winner. But it wasn't that way four and a half years ago. Right. Same thing in cloud. How are we going to transform this cloud business to be one where we cloud air? We're being, we're being made fun of. Like, how are you ever going to compete with Amazon? We had to go through our own catharsis. We divested that business. But out of that uh, pain point came a fundamental change. Some people left, some people stayed. Uh, but I'm just grateful through all of this that we learned tremendous amount. I think change is the most definitive thing that happens to every company and you have to embrace it. If you embrace change, it's going to make you a much stronger leader. I'll tell you, the Mandarin word okay, for crisis is two symbols. One that shows disaster and one that shows opportunity. I choose the opportunity you choose, path. choose, right? Yeah. And that's, everyone makes that choice, right? And if you make the right path, it could be a beautiful learning experience. Sanjay, words to live by. Definitely check out uh, that video on Sanjay's it's on LinkedIn, LinkedIn yeah. profile. Really fabulous always to sit down and talk to you. I love always a pleasure, Dave. our conversation. Congratulations on so all your success. In Thank the you. Field. Really appreciate, appreciate your support. It. Thank you. All right, everybody, that's it from Dell Technologies World 2018. You can hear the music behind us. Next week, big week, we got Red Hat Summit. I'll be at ServiceNow Knowledge. Uh, we got a couple of other shows, tons of shows coming up. And uh, I, I don't know, V. You were at Veeam on last year. I don't know if you're going to be there this year. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Well, we got a big one coming we'll, up at VMworld a little we'll, later. We'll be there. Yeah. We got yeah. VMworld coming up in, uh, at the August. end of August, early September, which is back at Moscone this year? It's in Las Vegas still. One it's more Las year. Vegas. And okay. then we move then back, back to Moscone after the construction's over. So go to thecube.net, check out all the shows. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.